This info drainage workflow video aims to answer the question of how do I model and design storage basins in info drainage? The model I have here is a small project site that is to be developed. And there is a designated area at the downstream point for a detention basin to help attenuate any flows in the post-developed case. First off, in the pre-developed scenario, we can check the catchment hydrology and see that we have a largely pervious area and a high infiltration capacity for the catchment. Run the analysis and we can check the results using the ARNR box plot tool. Just expanding the box plot window, I can turn on any trend lines, show the mean points, uh, highlight any outliers, and even show the inner points. Uh, looking at the box and whisker plot, it looks like the 60 minute duration is going to result in the maximum mean result. And looking at the statistics table, I can see that uh, it looks like the storm seven or the 60 minute duration is going to be uh, critical. So from the event selector, I can come to that particular storm and open up the table results and can see here that the flow for the pre-developed case is 658 litres per second. Next we'll jump to the post-developed case. If I open up the subcatchment properties, we can see here we have a higher percentage of impervious areas for this catchment and we have reduced infiltration capacity. If we go to the results, we should see that that resultant outflow has been increased. And looking at the results of the box and whisker plot, it now looks like the shorter duration, the 15 minute is our critical. And if I go to the 15 minute storm five using the event selector, I can see here, we now have an increased outflow from the development, which is resulting in 1,841.1 litres per second, which is almost double the pre-developed case. Now what we're going to do is place a stormwater control, in this case, a dry pond at the downstream end to help mitigate those pre-developed, uh, sorry, those post-developed flows. So I'm going to first create a scenario from our post-development phase. And I'm just going to rename it post-develop basin number one. And then I'm going to zoom in to the designated area. And we're going to digitize in a pond. So first I drag and place the icon, and then I'll be prompted to digitize the crest of the pond. So I'm just going to trace one of my previous examples. And right click to close. One of the great things about info drainage is it tries to go away from a typical Lincoln node type modeling 
platform. And as you can see here, we're actually drawing these storage control structures to plan in site. So we can see if there's going to be any clashes within the 2D plane as we're developing these. So now I'm going to open up the properties window and start changing some of these parameters. Uh, I'm going to make the basin 1.5 meters deep. Going to set a freeboard of 150 millimeters and it's going to be a dry pond, so there's not going to be an initial depth of water. Uh, you might also notice that the subcatchment is automatically draining to our pond, uh, so there's no need to set that up. Uh, so one of the first things we can do is use the sizing tools within Info Drainage to get a quick estimate of where the base of our pond should be. Designing for a side slope of one in five. So I press OK, that'll change my schematic. And if I press apply, that'll then show me the, the changed base and base in the plan view. The next thing I want to do is add a roughness value for my pond. You could also opt to add some infiltration, uh, but I'm going to leave it as zero for this example. Then I'm going to add an outlet for the basin. So just going to add, and I'm going to design this as an orifice for a an outlet uh, culvert, which is going to be designing the headwall. Uh, just checking that our invert elevation is the same as our base. And then if we come to the calculator, we can get an idea of what the required diameter for this culvert is going to be. Uh, so if we want an outflow of 658 as per our pre-developed case, and our pond is 1.5 metres deep, it looks like a diameter of uh, 532 millimetres will be what we need. So for now, I'm just going to set that to the closest available pipe size, uh, which is 525. Um, once I'm happy with that, I'm going to apply and close the pond property window. Now what we're left to do is run the analysis. So just going to check my criteria, validate to check for any warnings or errors, and then run the simulation. Okay, now that's complete, we will open up the ARNR results for our pond. And first, if we're looking at the, the depth in the basin, it looks like the 45 minute duration is our critical. Then looking at volume, again, it's our 45 minute and also outflow is our 45 minute duration. So using the event selector, I'm going to open up storm uh, number six for the 45 minute duration. 
and view those results. So as I can see here, we have an estimated water depth of just under a metre. Um, we have an outflow of 484 litres per second, which is under the pre-developed case. And it looks like our maximum volume is about 1,324 uh, cubic metres, which means that we still have about 34% of our basin unused. So what we're going to do now is take this volume and try and optimize our basin so that we're using the majority of it for this 1% rainfall event. So just remembering that volume as 1,324. We're going to come back to the pond, open up the properties and back to the sizing calculator. If we go for a storage estimate and we want to design up to our freeboard, we're going to enter in that volume 1,324. And if I press OK, it'll change this existing volume that we had to the new volume. And if I apply that, it will then change the actual shape of our basin in the plan view. So now if I press OK, I'll, just before I do that, I'll check that the outlet elevations are correct. All good. And then we'll run that analysis again. Coming back to the box plot results, looking at like a volume, uh, again, it looks like our storm six for the 45 minute duration is critical. So if we select that from the event selector and open up the results, now we have about 11% of that pond storage uh, being unused. So what I can do now is take this volume and try and iterate again to see if I can get that um, as close to zero as possible. So that's an example of how we can optimize the amount of volume used to detain, uh, to detain the post-developed flows. Um, Basin design generally is a case-by-case -case basis. Uh, sometimes we need to optimise the depth of water. Um, sometimes we need to get uh, that basin fit in with the available site constraints as well. What I have here is an example of a detailed setup for this development. So we can use in practice what we've just done through the workflow to continue to refine the basin as we progress this design.